Susie here. Welcome to episode 207 of the Her Business Podcast. Right now inside the Her Business Network, we are so focused on planning. Our members are working on their 2023 plans and we're running everything from all-day planning days to three-hour online workshops. We've also curated hundreds of dollars in resources for members to read, to listen to, webinars for them to watch and worksheets for them to complete. We've even printed these incredible mega wall planners and provided our popular planning day guidelines so that members can make real progress in setting really clear-cut and achievable plans for 2023. Now, why are we so fanatical about planning at Her Business? Planning is actually the first of our eight Her Business growth zones. Our growth zones are eight areas of business that all successful business owners have working for them. And every month inside of Her Business, we focus on one of these areas. And right now and for the rest of the year, planning is in the spotlight. Because the ability to create a plan and then work to the plan is one of the most fundamental secrets to the success of any project and any business. Now, that doesn't mean everything goes to plan, but I've always found that having a plan got me closer to the outcomes I wanted than not having a plan at all. And having a business plan also confirms that your business model is viable, that those financial goals that you've set for the year, that there's actually a way to achieve them. And that your business and your activities are structured in a way that's going to make you profitable. Now, planning does give you a clear handle on your what your finances are going to look like in the new year. Of course, it doesn't just in, take into account finances. Your planning needs to embrace all the areas of business that lead to that bottom line. That means having a plan for your marketing, a plan for your products and services that you're either going to introduce or sell more of, a plan for your team, a plan for what systems you'll introduce this next year to leverage you and allow you to do more with less. Now, I tend to develop a plan for each year, looking at all the areas of the business that might need attention, but getting really focused on the specific projects that I need to work on each quarter in order to get my annual goal. We call that big 12-month goal the big kahuna goal inside of her business, and you may have heard me um, mention that in previous episodes. But here's the thing with planning. It doesn't need to be complicated. You can be a creative and still plan. I've created a way to put a plan on a page, basically, and that makes it really easy to reference, to maintain, and to do. And I'm going to share that with you here today. I also have a great freebie that you can download that walks you through this back of the napkin plan so that you can, some people for the very first time, use our planning framework to plan your next 12 months. Now, the main thing is that whatever we put on our plans, it should support our biggest and most important goals. And when we look at planning, and I talked about our big uh, planners, it's not just about putting events on the calendar. It's really about creating a year that has great momentum when one promotion is leading to another, when you have time out for yourself and family, when you give yourself downtime to actually think, when you give yourself time to create the content that's ultimately going to bring more people into your world. When we start planning, What is most important is that we put things into our plan that is going to make it easy for bright, shiny objects to not derail us. So that means you're doing just the right activities that will support your goals and not being busy unnecessarily. I know our mantra here at Her Business is do less and obsess. And with our planning, our goal and my goal for our members is always for you to do only the amount of promotions and projects and activities that it takes to get your goals without having to do all the things. So rather than scattering your energy in every direction, being laser focused about what's going to help you get your bigger goals. Now, today's episode is how to create a plan that gets more people buying from you because maybe you're attracting lots of tire kickers who want free information and they stay on your subscriber list, but they never actually buy or you have trouble finding your target audience and marketing to them. Or maybe you've had a hard time getting people to actually purchase your online course or your book or your earrings or your training services or your website development or whatever it is that you sell. Or maybe where you get stuck is in actually the conversion point, actually closing the deal. So perhaps you're really happy to get in front of people, but at times you just can't seem to close the sale and get them on board with your products and services. So whether you want to build your email list, whether you want to develop a new online offer, whether you want to get more people to your e-commerce store or simply get more connections willing to have a sales conversation with you in the first place, the tips in this episode will really help. Now, the way that we think about our plans, um, especially if we're looking to create a plan that gets people to buy from us, is to look at three things. How do we attract, 
convert and keep more of our ideal clients. Now, if you're a listener of our Content Sales podcast, a wonderful marketing podcast that I do with my friend, Michelle Falzon, you'll have heard that term because attract, convert and keep your ideal clients is the tagline for that show. I'm using those terms in a slightly different way today, but very much still connected. So I'm using these categories of attract, convert and keep here in the context of your 2023 plans and how you're going to get more people buying from you. So there are three elements to getting more people buying from you. And the first is attract. It is to look at what you're doing to attract more of your ideal clients and prospects into your world. So what specifically are you going to do in 2023 to get people to know you, to become visible to just the right people? Because hoping someone's going to find your website and click the buy button or hoping someone will see your social media post and scurry to DM you about how they can work with you, that is not a plan. That is hope. And if you don't have a plan to attract more people into your world, I'm going to invite you to think about what you could be doing consistently. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be consistent to get more people attracted to what you do. Because this idea of build it and they will come, whether you've built a website or a social media account, an e-commerce store, a podcast, a course, that idea of build it and they will come, it only works in the movies. In real life and in small business, we need to be very deliberate and consistent about how we attract people. In our business, in her business, we've tried lots of different things over the years to get people into our world. And every year, we will select three or four things that we're really going to focus on to get people into our world. Now, to give you an idea of what we've done in the past, we have done online challenges. We've done week-long coaching programs. We've run webinars. We've got a free Facebook group. We've done an online summit. We've got dozens of PDF downloads. We've done a quiz. We publish weekly blog posts. We have two podcasts. So there are so many ways to attract people to your products and services. Maybe you do live events. Maybe you go to networking events. But being really clear, what are the activities that you're going to do, the ones that are going to give you the highest return? And when I went back and I looked um, over the years at what we'd done and what the actual return was as far as new clients, there were some things that we definitely ruled out that didn't really work. They took up a lot of energy. They used up a lot of resources, but they didn't work as well as some other things. So find what it is that works to get people into your world and then measure those results to see, well, that activity that I did, is that bringing in clients? So a couple of other ideas, public speaking, guest speaking spots, guest blogging spots, All those things can bring people into your world. And as I said, some things work better than others. So we keep trying just a few things. The main thing is to have a few key ways that you enjoy and that you can be consistent at to get people to know, like, and trust you. So if you love the sound of your own voice or you love interviewing, then doubling down on getting more listeners to a podcast might be the way to go. If you're comfortable with writing, then writing and optimizing regular written content on your blog or in emails in LinkedIn or wherever your beautiful writing can get you known, liked and trusted, then that is a way to go. If you're comfortable on a stage, if you're comfortable at networking events, I always like to start where you have the resources, the capacity, the skills and what you feel good doing. Because if we feel good doing it, we're more likely to do it. So whatever method you use to attract more people, the key is to do this consistently, even if it's imperfect, for long enough to generate the interest and build the audience. And by building the audience, I mean people are following you on social media, they're joining your Facebook group, they're subscribing to your blog or your newsletter, they're getting on your email list, they're attending your events. And the key is we always want to be attracting more of our ideal clients and we want to be sure that we are building this list of clients, this audience of clients all the time, all year round, but especially just before you're going to make your offer. You're going to put that course on sale. You're going to launch your membership. You're going to do that in-store promotion. You're going to do that Black Friday sale. Right? So you especially want to be active attracting people into your world just before you're going to do whatever promotion it is. Now, my co-host on Content Sales, Michelle, and I often speak about how so many women create beautiful products and services, and then they go looking for an audience to sell it to. And that's kind of the wrong way around. We want to always be building and attracting building an audience and attracting people into our world and then making offers to them regularly and offers that are perfect for them. Which brings me to the next part of our plan that gets more people buying from you. And that is that you want to convert people to buy from you. 
So our first step was attract more people into your world, get them on your email list, get them following you, get them reading your things, get them listening to you, etc. The second step is to be really clear about what you want them to buy from you first. I'm going to say that again. It's what you want them to buy first. Now, you might have a whole suite of products and services. Some might be high priced, some might be low priced. Um, but what is it they, they could pay you for right now? The main point is to be clear what you want people, the people that you're going to be attracting to buy first. And what you want them to be buying first is whatever it is that's going to be one, the easiest to get over the line, maybe the more profitable, maybe the most leveraged. You're going to make your own decision about that. But I know in our world, if we be strategic about what we want people to buy from us, then they're going to buy the other things that are relevant to them. But I know for us, for instance, we have a year-long mastermind. We have a mentoring services. We have a retreat that we run in Hawaii. We have our beautiful Her Business Network. The Her Business Network is what we want people to buy first. Because we know that once they join the network, once they start to get the results that members get, finding more clients, reaching more people, getting more systemized, getting more connected, then when we make the offer for them to join us in Hawaii for the reach retreat or to join the mastermind or do one of our courses, they already know, like, and trust us. So if you've been strategic, you're going to have crafted your product and service to be a hand-in-glove fit for what you've done to attract them in the first place. I'll explain that in a minute. When you've crafted offers specifically for the people that you've attracted, your conversions are naturally going to be higher because you've created a pathway for them that makes sense to them to go from the thing that you attracted them with to the thing that you want to buy from them. So say, for example, you knew that you wanted to ultimately sell your solar installation services. As part of your attract plan, you might run a webinar on how to save money by installing solar panels on your roof. You're clear that those people, they have some interest in saving money on electricity. They have some interest in considering solar. So then, of course, when you offer them the opportunity to come out and quote on putting solar panels, it makes sense. If you have a free online challenge that is about how to create Instagram reels, and then your offer, the thing you want them to buy first, is a way to be more effective with their use of Instagram in their business, maybe through your course, maybe through your group coaching program, then you're more likely to sell that thing because it's a hand and glove fit to how they came into your world. It sounds pretty obvious, right? But I so often see people attracting by throwing a whole lot of ideas out there and then offering something that is not a natural next step for that person. So, for example, maybe you're multi-skilled, maybe you're a photographer and you do some video, you also are a social media expert. So, you go out with all three messages trying to attract people and what happens is people get confused and so then when you make your offer, it's not a hand-in-glove fit for how they came to know you. So, when you're attracting people, you want to be known for something, you want to be very clear on what it is that you want them to buy first so that the method that you're using, the messaging that you're using for the items that you're using, your webinars you're running, the blog posts you're doing, the social media posts, they are a natural fit for the thing you want them to buy first. So how do you choose the thing you want them to buy first? Your core offer, that's the main thing you want people to buy from you, it opens up the doors to other things in your world. That could be higher priced items, that could be cross-selling to other services, it could be working more closely with you. So the first thing you want them to buy, your core offer, you want it to be the perfect entry into your world. This is the convert part of the attract, convert, and keep formula that I mentioned earlier. Now, you may have a range of products and services. So your core offer, the thing you want them to buy first, is going to be the bread and butter of your business usually. It's what makes your business sustainable and spurs the growth of your business. Now, if you're an e-commerce merchant and you have um, hundreds or thousands of products on offer, that's great. There's still a line item or a type of product that is going to be the what opens up their world. Maybe it's a less expensive e-commerce item that has a natural hand-in-glove fit with something more expensive that you do. A friend of mine, Sarah, she has a store that sells monogrammed um, purses, accessories, all sorts of things. Now, that is how most people come into their world. her world. They either subscribe for her T-shirt of the month club or they join her monogram box and every month she sends them all these curated beautiful goodies with something monogrammed. Many of those clients have gone on to then become clients of hers for the business that she has 
that teaches people how to have a subscription box business, right? So it's hand in glove fit for her because they get their monthly box, their small business owners, they think this is a great idea. I have something that I could package into a subscription offer. So then she offers her coaching services. So at her business, as I said, the Her Business Network is our core offer. When people join the membership, we know that they'll get amazing results growing their business. That's why members stay for years. That's why members who leave for whatever reason quickly return. While the Her Business Network is our lowest price offer, it's our core offer because we know that when women join the network, they're more likely to buy our other services, whether that's mentoring, our retreat in Hawaii, our year-long mastermind program, or our courses. Now, by being clear on what we want people to buy first, it means that we can channel our marketing efforts, our blog posts, our webinars, our social posts, our strategic alliances towards this one thing. It takes the pressure off me, it takes the pressure off the team, and it gets more people buying from us because there's one clear message about how we can help people. And the best way for us to help people initially with us is through the Her Business Network. All right, the third part of our plan that gets more people buying from you is to ask, how can I keep more of my clients coming back and referring me? So this is the keep part of the attract, convert and keep formula. So the question to ask here is, what do people buy next? What do I want people to buy next? Now, not every business has a, what we call a back end offer and a what's next. But this is always something to consider down the line. You can have a high six-figure, even seven-figure business just with having a great way to attract people and to convert them into your existing core offer. But for some businesses, there's money left on the table because people want that more expensive thing. They want to work more closely with you. They want the high-end version of what you do. So again, knowing at the outset what your goal is means that you can plan your year with your marketing efforts well-placed on the calendar to lead from one thing to another. So let me give you an example. We run an event for our members called Her Business Live. It's incredible. It's open to non-members, but it's much more expensive uh, for them because Her Business members get it free. So we run this at a time in the year that is conducive to introducing members to our other programs, like our Mastermind Experience month-long training, which gives women a great taste of what it's like to be in a mastermind. We don't run that course at any time of year. We run it at a point in time where women have been to Her Business Live, they get an experience of how amazing our community is and how great it is to train with me. And I introduce them to my co-presenter in the Mastermind Experience, Michelle Falzon. We co-present that program. And so then we run the course a few weeks after Her Business Live. The timing of those two things is very deliberate. We run the REACH retreat typically in October. That's partly due to weather, but it's more due to what we do leading up to that, what offers we make when we open the doors for membership and people who are going to be likely candidates for the REACH retreat. So as you're thinking about your plan and you're thinking about what do I want people to buy next, think about what order you're putting things in on your calendar. And so if you join us when we open up in March, we typically open up for three days to acquire new members, then we do that before we run Her Business Live in the middle of the year. We do Her Business Live before we run our Mastermind Experience course. We run our Mastermind Experience course before we open the doors to our Mastermind program. We run the REACH retreat in October because we've done other things during the year to be able to curate the group for the REACH retreat based on the new members who've come in during the year who we think would be ideal for that program. Do you see how that works? Do you see how the plan is helping people buy from us because we've worked with the end in mind and planned our marketing promotions in the right part of the year with the right programs designed for our ideal clients so that the buying process becomes more seamless? This is something you can absolutely do. It does take getting a bird's eye view of your business. It does take really thinking about your planning in a more strategic way, knowing very clearly what are the few things that I'm going to do to attract more people. What are the offers I'm going to make to them because I know this is what I want them to buy first? How am I going to keep them as clients and have them buy the next thing? I want to give you another example from our community, and then I want you to think about this from your own business perspective. So, for example, one of our members, the wonderful Kat Matson, she helps women speak with impact. So, 
to attract women to her speaking course, she might attract women with her how to stop rambling and start speaking with impact free download. So she might offer that free download. She might run ads to that. She might do strategic alliances around that. She might do social posts. She might mention it on her podcast. She's clear that the first thing she wants people to do to become to come into her world, her attraction tool is her free download. She knows that once she gets people into her world and she's attracted them, she can then convert them to buyers of her Impactful Presenters program when she opens that up a couple of times a year. And so she amplifies the promotion of her attraction tool, which is the free download, just before she's going to open the doors to her course. Once people are in her course, she's already determined that what they could do next is stay on for her membership. Now, do they all stay on? No, but because she's already planned for it, she's already decided what she wants them to buy next, then she can very strategically and very empathetically guide people for whom the next thing is right down that road. So she focuses hard on getting as many people to download her Stop Round Bling download, to join her free Facebook group, to listen to her podcast. There are three things that she does to attract. And then at specific times of year, She moves into convert phase and she opens the door to her course, which women rush to buy. And then when the course is almost over, she's clear on the path that they should take next, and that is to offer her membership. Now, what if you're an e-commerce store or a retailer? You might use any of the suggestions to attract people that I've mentioned here on this episode. And if you're clear on the first thing you want them to buy, if it's a particular product or particular service, then the activity you do in the attract part of your plan will be a natural precursor to what you want them to buy first. Then once they buy from you, you already want to have in mind what is the natural next thing for them to buy next. Now, you might say, Susie, I sell home loans or I design homes or I train frontline managers. People don't buy from me again and again. But what if a percentage of people referred you, introduced you to their friends, came back to you years later when they needed another loan or they'd moved companies and they had a new team of frontline managers or they had a new house that needed designing or renovating. This back-end activity should be part of your plan, not something that happens sometimes, but something that you've already clearly thought out and make offers about on a regular basis. Here's the key. You don't need to sell a lot of different products and services. The clearer you are about what you want people to buy first, what your core offer is, and then what you want them to buy next, the easier it's going to be for people to buy from you. Even if right now you only have one core product or service and one or two ways to attract people into your world, great. But you want to have those things very clearly demarcated in your year for next year. But now think about the one product or service you most want to sell. Then think about what you'll do to attract people to that product or service before you make the offer. This decision is going to inform what content you create, what events you attend, what networks you belong to, what social networks you're going to post on, what content marketing you're going to do. It is about starting with the end in mind when you're creating your plan that gets more people buying from you. This plan helps you get more people buying from you because it brings a very clear focus to your sales and your marketing, allowing you to be strategic rather than ad hoc in how you attract, convert, and keep more of your idle clients. And while what we've been talking about mainly is marketing, so many other areas come to mind. Who is the team that's going to execute these programs in the next year? Who might you need to have alliances with? What are the social platforms? What technology might you need? What is it going to cost? What do the financials look like? What would it look like if all this worked beautifully What might you spend on attracting new clients? What could you do for free? What might you need to spend money on? This is all part of planning and why I love to talk about planning. (laughs) So what I've created for you is the back of the napkin marketing plan. This is a one-page document that allows you to put into place the three things we talked about. I'm going to attract people. I'm going to convert people. I'm going to keep people coming back. I'm going to put the details of that over on our show notes page at herbusiness.com forward slash forward slash, excuse me, 207, herbusiness.com forward slash 207. The other thing I'm going to put on there is a link to our 2023 planner kit. Depending on when you're listening to this episode, I know that we're shipping kits out daily. It includes two mega wall size planners, our planning day guidelines, and it includes a bonus workshop that I'm running on the 8th of December. 
if you've missed the workshop, don't worry. The planner kit and the other things that come with it are truly worth the incredible value. So I'll put those details over on herbusiness.com forward slash 207. Remember, first, you want to always be attracting more people into your world using just a few methods that are directly linked to what you want them to buy first. Then you want to be clear in advance that there is something that you want them to buy next so that you're crafting the experience and seeding the opportunity all the way along for them so that some of them go on to buy the next thing or to refer someone to you. Remember, pick up your free template and the details about our planner over at herbusiness.com forward slash 207. I want to say I love doing this show for you. I appreciate you listening and sharing this episode with your friends. I love it every time I get a rating or a view or a comment from you. And so I want to share this one here from Sarah Kanata. She says, um, this is about episode 203. She said, this was the perfect way to start my week this morning. As I've been niching and seeing a lot of potential in what I'm doing, fear has been popping up at certain points and excitement too. Great episode. And that episode was episode 203, which I titled, Say Yes to a Business Breakthrough. So you can catch that episode and all the other 200 plus episodes on your favorite podcasting app. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, I would love it if you would leave us a rating or review. It really helps get the word out about the show so that we can help more and more women grow and scale their business. If you enjoyed this episode, um, let me know. You can write to me at podcast at herbusiness.com. That's podcast at herbusiness.com. A reminder, pick up your freebies over at herbusiness.com forward slash 207. Join me next time right here on the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now. <music>